you suffer from the debilitating symptoms of chronic pain, swelling, and loss of joint motion due to arthritis? Are you taking drugs like Celebrex and Vioxx or other super aspirin prescriptions? If you are, you're increasing the risk of heart attack and stroke by up to 50%. This is Dr. Tom Rosell, host of Dr. Tom Rosell Live Sundays at 12 noon. Why live with pain or the dangerous side effects of drugs when the doctors at the Rosell Center for Healing practicing 21st century integrative medicine can help you experience relief like never before? Simple, safe, chiropractic, acupuncture, and nutritional care can provide significant relief from arthritic pain in less than six weeks. More than 70% of our patients experience a return to life far beyond their expectations. Give yourself the best gift possible, freedom from arthritic pain, naturally. Call today to schedule an appointment. Call 703-698-7117 or visit online at rosellcare.com. Dr. Tom Roselle live right now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. And welcome to Dr. Tom Roselle live. We're in studio today and this is Dr. Stephanie Pina filling in for Dr. Tom Roselle as he's traveling back from yet another conference learning more interesting things about how to try and apply to, to help you and everyone else who is happen, happens to be listening in this area. Uh, I am in studio today, and joining me is going to be your speaker for this uh, Wednesday's evening lunch and learn, or dinner and learn, as some people will make it, uh, September the 2nd at 7.30 p.m. You're going to be listening to an amazing um, lecture done by Dr. Harlan Browning on the temporomandibular joint, the TMJ, and all of the disorders and stuff that come along with it. Dr. Browning, Welcome. It's always good to be here with you, Stephanie. I know. We seem to always be the ones filling in when, when Dr. Rizal gets to travel. We we do, but I think we do a great job at we it. We do. Of course we do. We're just going to have to take over all the time now. Well, we, we might have to. <laughs> we'll just change the name on everything. So so TMJ is uh, one of the most popular things that people come into other than low back pain, um, even to their general practitioner. And, you know, we hear about it. We learn about it. We hear clicking and popping and pain and that goes into that side of the skull, but a lot of people don't realize how intricate that area is and what's actually going on, and that's what Dr. Browning's going to be talking about on Wednesday night, Um, but Dr. Browning, why don't you lead us into it now? Well, you know, first of all, when when people have jaw pain, they always associate the problem as something the dentist has to primarily handle, And, and for, you know, many people, that's not actually the case because... Most of the time when we're having jaw pain, it's a, it's a muscular problem, in, you know, in the cranium, the, the skull, or, or the jaw itself. So it can be treated through physical medicine very, very effectively. Um, we certainly like to have dentists on board to help uh, correct the bite and those types of things, but there's lots of things that can be done in a conservative manner and not even uh, address the teeth itself. So I know those of us who have been listening to the show for a while have heard us talk about this topic and, and some of the we've had some of the dentists on as well too to talk about different types of apparatuses and, and treatments and stuff. But I think what's interesting is is that particular joint, like you mentioned, between the, the mandible of the jaw and, and the skull, you know, there's a lot going on in a little little bit of area there. It's not just uh, you know, like when we think of even shoulder joints or knee joints where there's a there's also a lot going on there, but Lot and go on in a little area that can go wrong. Yeah, and you know it's 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 not any different than any other joint. Um, th- there's a capsule that surrounds it. It's a, it's a bunch of ligaments that holds it in place. There's a, actually a disc in there, just like there's discs in your in your back. So the the jaw is pretty unique that it it can move in multiple directions. It slides forward and backwards, and it, it hinges, and it can go left to right. So um, it's very intricate. It, there's a lot of force, obviously, generated in the in the jaw itself to help chew and those types of things and inherently that's becomes one of the major problems is sometimes the force is is overwhelming for the disc and for the joint itself and then it starts to break down and as it breaks down then we develop pain and and all the other associated problems with it we also know you know looking at this the like you brought up there can be joint pain itself which can also radiate to different areas and then there's also the muscles that are involved so you're talking when you're looking at the overall problem, you have multiple areas that you can treat, but multiple areas that there also might be issues at as yes, well. Yes, certainly. Um, the musculature that, that makes the mouth open and closes is, is 
um, unique because it has a strong relationship, obviously, with the jaw itself, but it has a very strong relationship with the cervical spine because a lot of those muscles um, have attachment points that are very close to it. So what I often see is people who have TMJ problems, um, their their initial issue is because of their cervical spine. Either their head is being held too far forward or sometimes it's just being tilted to the side. So that sling of muscles that holds the jaw in place has to you know steady itself, and, and unfortunately it'll be become uh, often out of position and then we get to all the the associated pain that's that um, that we find with TMJ problems. So TMJ is the actual joint itself, TMD would be the dysfunction. That's correct. There T- we go. TMD is is the dysfunction. Right. So a lot of times I know people just think TMJ has got to be all the problems that are related to it, but we're actually talking about the physical joint itself. Right, correct. We're talking about the joint itself, the mus the muscles that are involved and the teeth, you know, because the teeth have a lot to do with the way the mouth closes in, you know, centric relationship that means how the teeth align when the, when they touch each other. So if we have um teeth that are not properly positioned or, you know, it's an orthodontic issue, then the person is going to have a, a TMD problem, a joint problem eventually. Now, we also know that with TMJ issues, and because, like I said, there's a lot of stuff going on in small areas between the vascular going to the head, the nervous system's got you have major nerves coming out, the facial nerve, trigeminal nerves kind of in that same area too. A lot of other things other than dental issues come out from TMJ that we don't think about, such as headaches sure such so, as muscle and neck ten- tension like you mentioned as well too exactly and we can we can certainly have referred pain meaning that a structure that's not located where the pain is is referring pain there so um, trigger points in, in muscles in the neck will do that um, you know the cranial bones themselves when they shift because they move dynamically all the time they can cause referred pain and and we can also get entrapments of, of nerves as they as they pass out and you refer to the trigeminal nerve and the facial nerve um, they come out and they pierce through different muscles so that we can get entrapments there that will, will mimic a, a, a TMJ dysfunction when um, it's actually not a, a, a jaw problem. And I think what's also interesting is not only does that pain tend to go forward along that area, but actually go back as well, too, to the neck and to the ear. And some of the problems that we see you know, behind what we think is the jaw joint you know, can be related to that area and what's going on with the muscles as well, too. Yeah, and when you look at the TMJ, you're not just isolating that joint in particular. Uh, we refer to it as the stomatic nathic system, which means that the jaw is part of the movable cranium, which sits on the cervical spine, which sits on the, the rest of the torso. So you have to look at the big picture uh, when you have a person that has TMJ pain because the the postural distortion the person might have might be what's pushing the, the jaw to a place that it can't handle it and then it breaks down and then we have the associated pain. So it's a whole system that we have to, um, you know, certainly look at. So the TMJ joint and all of the dysfunctions that are along with it are going to be the topic for this Wednesday night's lecture at 7.30 p.m. at the Roselle Center for Healing in Fairfax, Virginia. If you want to sign up for this, because I have a feeling it's going to be a busy one, you need to call the office to reserve your spot at 703-698-7117 and sign up for Dr. Browning's TMJ lecture. And when you're also in there, you can also check out the website as well to rosellecare.com and get more information about, um, I believe at the end of this month, there's another discount ending for Ageless Health 2015, which both myself and Dr. Browning will be speaking at. We will be there. We will. I think you are you might be right before me or right after me. I'm not sure. But yeah, I think actually I'm, I'm starting in the morning. I think he's a lead hitter. Well, well I'm after lead Dr. Hitter. Hitter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So yeah, we had. A, I guess it's his 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 presentation. So he needs to start first, right? Yes. So and at least that one's on a Saturday. So he always comes back on Sunday to do the wrap up afterwards of everything that went down on on Saturday. Right. So, but TMJ is going to be today's issue, and this is what we're talking about on the Dr. Roselle Live Show. Um, if you have any questions or comments too related to this, or things have worked for you, or you have any questions in general, feel free to give us a call here at the uh, studio. 1-888-630-9625, and we'd be happy to take your call. Dr. Browning, other than dental issues, too, I mean, a lot of the times we hear about other issues that lead into dental issues, like we're talking about the muscles, and we think about other muscle skeletal issues with the rest of the body. Now, we all hold our stress and tension in different areas, but the the muscles of the face and the jaw 
can be part of that as well. Certainly. And, you know, for a lot of people, you, you, you hit upon the point of stress. That's, that's a big thing. So they, they brux, which means that they clench their teeth. And over time, the teeth will, will literally wear down. So, uh, many people do it when they're sleeping. They don't, they don't, don't even realize it, but they'll wake up and they'll have a sore jaw. In, in those cases, then you need to, get an appliance, something that they can wear at nighttime to prevent them from, from grinding. Um, a, a dentist that I work closely with in, in Alexandria, you know, stressed something to me that I think is very important. He, he called it the, the law of threes. And the body works around necessities. And he, he said that, you know, in th- we can go three weeks without food, we can go three days without water, but we can only go about three minutes without air. So in the dental world, we need to think about the TMJ as it relates to keeping an open airway. So for a lot of folks that have apnea or that they don't sleep well, the issue is a TMJ problem. No, they might not have pain, but the the issue is they can't keep their jaw in a position to keep the airway open. So we have to kind of expand on the thought process of the TMJ and take it outside of the realm of pain. Maybe it's it's a functionality. If we don't get good quality sleep, um, the rest of the body is just going to break down. And what I think is interesting is when we think about, you know, when we're standing up straight, you know, the jaw will usually have a we'll have a closed mouth and everything and there it'll be in place but when we're lying down flat things shift you know gravity takes that jaw and kind of pulls it back and the way i always remember that is when you go to a cpr class and they're teaching you mouth to mouth resuscitation the first thing they tell you is you have to lift that jaw up and out of the way in order to get that airway open so the same thing would go with a sleeping position as it would as if you're performing cpr yeah and for a lot of people the sleeping position is on their stomach which is uh, that's a nightmare for the, obviously for, for the TMJ, but certainly for the, the the spine as well. Because if you want to, you know, breathe, you got to turn your head to either the left or the right, and you're just going to strain the the tissues. But um, again, we always think of of the TMJ problem as it relates to to a pain issue. But for I'd say the majority of people that have dysfunction, it's it's not a pain; it's it's a functionality. Either they can't they can't breathe right, or their just teeth do not hit correctly. When we look at the the teeth not hitting correctly as well too um i know there are many different chiropractic manipulations there are are at least four there's three main but one extra fourth acupuncture meridian that runs into that area that you can actually use to treat to relax the muscles and that go directly towards the joint what else is involved with it do we see reflux pain usually that crosses over do we see it all just locally near the joint i mean you talked a little bit about following those nerves around but where else do you see that pain show up? Well, in the body, because of, of the way we walk and what we call that gait, there's a reciprocal motion um, from left to right. Certain joints move in certain directions when we when we walk. And the same holds true with the TMJ. The muscles will contract and relax as we're moving. So there's a, actually a very close relationship with the the right side of TMJ and the right sided hip and the left side of TMJ and the left sided hip. So as we move, the muscles in the hip contract and then conversely, we get the same contracture in the TMJ itself. And that's really to keep the, the mandible in, in good position while we're walking. So what I sometimes find with people is their hip dysfunction will propagate their jaw dysfunction and very often you can do things specifically to the jaw which will help albeit temporary but the ultimate way to, to address the problem is to to fix their their gait the way they walk and it might be you know, primarily a hip issue so that's it's it's very fascinating yeah in fact i remember being in there I, I came in after one weekend of probably overdoing it and my my hip was out and i remember dr rizal coming up to me and kind of pushing in on what i didn't think was a tender you know, TMJ joint in that area over and over again. And next thing you know, like the hip started to open up and I started going, that's, that's an interesting way to look at things. And, and you, you you can take it the other way. If you have a stable TMJ, you're going to have a, 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 a stable hip joint. It, it's for that reason that the NFL and other sports industries now are using mouth guards that are specifically designed. There's a very interesting research that shows that when they have a, a certain mouth guards, then their vertical leap is higher. They're, they're sprinting faster. I mean, the research is there. It's, it's, it's interesting. So it's now a science. It's not just a preventative mechanism. So we're understanding that one part of the body doesn't necessarily mean that all the issues is right there, but it can affect other areas as well, too. We're going to take a quick break, and we're going to be back. And this is the Dr. Tom Rizal Live Show. You've been everywhere, you've done everything, and you still feel like, well, you know. 
Did you know that your health and wellness starts with your brain and nervous system? What if by establishing normal brain and nervous system function, you could regain your energy, strength, and vitality? Would you be interested? I'm Dr. Tom Rozelle, host of Dr. Tom Rozelle Live. Join me and an elite group of wellness practitioners for Ageless Health 2015 on October 17th at Fairview Park Marriott Hotel in Falls Church, Virginia. For a day that could change your life forever, a day when you'll learn step-by-step step how to create a brain-body connection that will allow you to live in a state of wellness that you deserve. Register today at agelesshealth2015.com. That's agelesshealth2015.com. Or call 703-698-7117. Register today. After all, your health is a do-it-yourself program. Welcome back to the Dr. Tom Rozelle Live Show. We are live in studio, and this is Dr. Stephanie Pina and Dr. Harlan Browning. And today we are talking about the temporal mandibular joint, TMJ joint, and all the issues that are related to it, so the dysfunction of it. And if you are interested in this topic, feel free to do one of two things tonight, and that's uh, call in to, we can answer your questions live here at 888-630-9625. We're getting some calls in now. And the other thing you can do to get more information is to call our office to reserve your spot for this Wednesday night's 730 lecture with Dr. Browning. And that number is 703-698-7117. And reserve your spot because you know they're going to get full. And this is a great lecture. Dr. Brownie actually taught um, the rest of the doctors and us a number of months ago, I think. Um, and it was it was great because essentially what we learned was how you know how everything kind of comes together and what's the newest things out there. We're going to take a call now. Um, Fred from Manassas, how are you doing? Fred, are you there? Yes, I am. How's everything going? Oh, uh, it keeps going. I'm. I'm a disabled vet, and I spend most of my day in bed, so uh, I didn't go very far. Ah, so you had a, do you have a question about uh, jaw tension while you're sleeping? Uh, yes, I did. All right, tell us about it. Well, the um, my grandfather uh, passed away recently, and uh, he uh, uh, advocated taking an ounce and a half of vodka before at bedtime. Uh, uh, to relax the body and and the jaw and the and and the, uh, all the muscles in the uh, head and neck and uh, I was just uh, wondering if that was a uh, uh, something that was um, uh, useful uh, and since he lived to 104 I it it didn't seem to hurt him I thought maybe he's on to something yeah. Dr. Browning? Fred, um, you know, well, alcohol is, is a, a sedative, I guess we could, we could call it. It wouldn't be my, my go-to if you had chronic, uh, jaw pain while you're sleeping. I'd probably look to other things that are, are, you know, sedatives as, as well. Uh, magnesium, calcium, these help to relax muscles. So that would probably be a better option. Um, you know, if if you're getting the tension while you're sleeping, you might be a good candidate, though, also for for an appliance, which would be a a, a something that you wear at nighttime that sits on your bottom teeth. You never want it on the the upper teeth, and I see that a lot. You don't want it on the upper teeth because the the upper part of the maxilla it moves, and if you lock it in, that could be a whole another set of issues. But but uh, again, an appliance uh, well, might. May, may I interrupt you and say? Uh, uh, why, when something that's so easy and natural works, um, why do doctors, uh, and, and Dr. Tom always rails against big pharma, uh, why do doctors uh, come out and say, well, oh, get this appliance or get this uh, prescription or get calcium or, or do this? Uh, why not, uh, if a shot of vodka relaxes the the uh, the muscles and let you go to sleep. Uh, 
why isn't that a good thing? Well, because there's there's other inherent problems with with that. You know, alcohol is be, can become toxic to the to the liver. You know, there's there there could be a dependency issue. So I, it, it's not going to be necessarily the go-to. I think for any medical professional to to recommend that. And certainly, if the person is taking you know any kind of prescription medication, there could be complications associated with that as as well. So it's not so much that they are trying to get you to do something that's not going to work. It's just that they're going to go through things that they've tried and true that, that have helped uh, other patients and, and other people. And I think sometimes with some of the recommend, recommendations, like with that, what Dr. Browning was just saying with the, the calcium or the magnesium, we can use our own body systems to help you know, get the muscles to relax if we're, we're deficient in calcium or deficient in magnesium. You know, the body's trying to find a way to tell us that. And so those tight muscles can be one of the ways to do that. So the easiest thing is to treat, you know, the source of the problem versus add more things to it. You know, obviously here we're not big components on doing medication like using muscle relaxants. But when we're looking at how do you how do you treat the body so that you're giving it what it wants and what it needs so it can fix the, pr- the issue by itself. You know, I think that's where we can kind of look at what else is going on and also looking at structure and position as well, too. So i um, got another question. Uh, Deb, real quick, um, what's your question? We might have to answer it right after the break. Okay. Oh, okay. So we'll, we'll get here right after the break, and we'll go from there. So we're talking about TMJ and Templar just. Uh, Disorders of the TMJ, and um, we're going to be talking about this just like Dr. Browning will be talking about it during the Wednesday night lecture. Also, make sure you go online online to rosellcare.com to find out more information about Ageless Health 2015. It doesn't seem like it's too far away, but that's coming up October 17th, and that's going to be in Falls Church, Virginia, and we want you to be there, and you can see us live in person as we talk about how the brain and body come together. We'll be back after this break. Did you know that routine mammograms can increase radiation exposure to breast tissue 1,000 times over a chest x-ray? Now consider a simple, non-invasive, and totally safe medical procedure approved by the FDA since 1982 that can detect breast cancer five to eight years before it can be visualized on a mammogram. Infrared thermographic imaging can accurately detect the initial signs of breast cancer as increased blood supply and metabolic rate, which is recorded as heat. Why expose yourself to radiation when accurate and safe medical detection is available? Call the Thermography Center of Fairfax to schedule a breast exam today at 703-948-7248. That's 703-943-7248. For more information, visit www.thermographyscan.net. That's thermographyscan.net for the Thermography Center of Fairfax. The Roselle Center for Healing is a proud supporter of breast cancer awareness and reminds you to conduct a monthly breast self-examination and a thermographic breast scan as part of your annual wellness checkup. Dr. Tom Rosell Live continues now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. And welcome back to the Dr. Tom Rosell Live show. We are in studio here today, and I'm with Dr. Harlan Browning, and we are talking about the TMJ joint and all the dysfunctions that can come along with it, how it affects the rest of the body and how it can actually lead to some of your systems like poor sleeping and migraines and headaches and referred pain. A lot of stuff that goes along with a very little spot, but it can cause some big problems with structural issues and everything else. Um, we're going to take a quick phone call. Deb, how can we help you? Uh, yes, I was wondering if you could talk about um, how you find a good dentist. Looking for anyone in specific? Because, you know, it's, I think dentistry is always interesting because I think from, from what I remember, you have gentle dentists and then, you know, that people think about going into fun, getting regular cleaning and, and making sure they don't have cavities and x-rays and, you know, general hygiene health. And then you start to see some of the specialists who get into, you know, more oral surgery, the people that are working with the TMJ joints that are, you know, they're sitting there going, they're looking at something very, very specific. And even orthodontics can be very different because all these three types of people might be, you know, in play with each other. You know, one might not be able, has to refer to the other one because they might not be treating that. So I think it kind of depends on what's going on. And, and what we're seeing a lot of times, too, is when people come in and they're having issues with, say, old fillings and, you know, mercury toxicity, and, and we're trying to either detox the body or make sure they're healthy, we actually have to find a different type of more holistic dentist 
that can really go in there and knows what they're doing when they're taking out these old fillings that may possibly have mercury in them and do the right thing so that, you know, you're not getting exposed to mercury um, fumes. You're not getting any of it leaching into the body. It has to be done the correct way. And, and some the people that we work with that we refer out to, and even some of the patient, uh, the people that patients have found, you know, they found the good ones and the bad ones. So there's, there's a lot of different things to come into play when you're looking for, particularly for a, a dentist. Dr. Dr. Browning? Yeah, Debbie, is there a specific uh, uh, issue you're having that, that maybe requires somebody who's a specialist, or this is just for you know general dental care? It's, it's for general dentistry. Um, the dentist I had that I really liked just retired, and so it's, I'm don't, I don't even know where to start to find um, somebody that's going to do the general dentistry. Um, well, I mean, I can certainly make a recommendation uh, that, Myself and all the other uh, doctors in the office, we see uh, Dr. Michael Chung in Oakton. He's excellent. He specializes in neuromusculoskeletal dentistry, um, which has a lot to do with fitting appliances and stuff. But I, I, I just go there for my, my, my cleaning, and, and they do a fantastic job. So I can highly recommend him. Again, you know, word of mouth, if you're looking for, no pun intended, if you're looking for a, a dentist, you might want to ask your your, your friends and, and family. But um uh, Dr. Chung is is fantastic. Is he? Does he do like um? Uh, if you have to get fillings replaced and crowns and things. Yep, actually, he did a crown for me uh, last year. So he he does all of those things, and he he has a good network for, for referrals. If he needs someone to go out for orthodontics for braces, he has a guy that he sends people to. He has surgeons that he works with. So he oh, he he has a a good network, and he understands the work that we do in the office. And I think that's very important because we'll send people to him that have TMJ problems. Um, a lot of times they don't know that they're having them. We know that the person needs an appliance to keep their jaw stable, so he understands what we do. And, you know, because he understands that, then he sends people to us occasionally as well because he knows that if, if the person does not have a leveled occiput or their skull is not where it, positioned right, then they're going to need rehabilitation on that end as well. So it, it's, a, it's a very symbiotic relationship. Okay. So he's fantastic. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. I think she brings up a good point because when we look at, you know, dentists as specialists of the mouth and, you know, even within specialists, there's specialties, there's specialists, you know, anytime you're working with multiple doctors and stuff, that information can be important when you're, when you're talking, whether it's a primary care doctor, where it's, it's us at the Roselle Center, you know, that back to back information might mean something else to the other specialists. So you want to make sure that everybody's in the same loop and that also puts you more active in your own health care as well too. Yeah, certainly. And I think again it's it's very important that the that the the dentist or any other practitioner you refer to understands what you do in the office because if they don't then they might contradict what you're you, you know you've been telling the patient as far as changes they need to make to get their health better. Absolutely. Uh let's go to the phones again. Barbara, how can we help you? Hi. Uh my husband has arthritis in both knees and they're swollen. Our acupuncture has not helped, so the acupuncturist doctor did a cortisone. She applied a cortisone shot um, in in his right knee only, and uh, his right knee was drained, but not the left. Um, the following week, it was still swollen, so she went on and gave him this synvis s y n v i s c three. Um, injection treatment. Uh, so he had the first one. The knee is still enlarged. The right knee is still enlarged. I was wondering whether he should have gone this path or what other different treatment would have you recommended or do you recommend getting any other additional treatment because he's now stuck to go on for the next two because it's a three injection treatment. And I'm, I, I myself... I'm not sure this was the right path to go. Dr. Browning? Yeah, um, so what what your your doctor is obviously trying to do is he's trying to do more conservative type measures, albeit within the, the scope of what he practices, so which is pharmacology. The synvisc is is to help to to promote the lubrication of of the joint itself. Um, you know, I, I do. And I think Dr. Pino will agree with this. Uh, you know, w- without knowing exactly what they were doing on the acupuncture side, it's it's hard to say if that was a failure or not because acupunctures are 
acupuncturists are completely different from describing what this doctor is doing. It sounds like acupuncture is just a small part of his practice and he's probably doing a lot more injections. Uh, I would certainly recommend di- different types of rehabilitation and exercises. I personally, in my practice, I like to use what's called a cold laser, exactly what it sounds like. It's a laser. It, it emits light, but there's no heat. And it has a profound effect on inflammation. Uh, kinesio taping, different types of adjustments. The, the issue in his knee might actually not be primarily coming from his knee. There might be a foot dysfunction that's caused his knee to be uh, beat up over the years. So there's a lot of different things that, that can be done. It's one of those things where it's, you know, if you sit with a patient, you talk with them, you do the examination, you have a better understanding of what's going on. Um, and I, th- I think Dr. Pina would, would agree on that as well. Absolutely. I think what's interesting, too, is when you're sitting with a patient where things aren't getting any better, you really have to say, you know, why are they not getting better? If, if, if they've been getting injections and, you know, it's supposed to decrease pain or increase the lubrication there and it's not, you know, affecting the, the joint or, work, you know, the muscle or anything – why is this not working for the body? What else is preventing that healing from happening? You know, if everything falled into line and, and we would just have one treatment for everything, it would be knee pain would be, you know, treated with X, Y, and Z, and then we'd be done. But it doesn't. Everyone heals a little different. So I think ultimately getting it reevaluated by either someone like Dr. Browning or myself would be the, the best thing to do. And then you can really look at what treatment options might be going on because I think if you're continuing kind of down this path and not seeing any help, you know, you could sit and wait and see what time does, but I don't think it's going to be the right the right choice for the moment. So, but good question, you know, and it brings us back to yet another really complicated joint where there's a lot of things going on, a lot of moving pieces, and you know, people kind of take it for granted that it's always going to work properly, it's always going to be there, but you know, it tweaks one way or the other, and next thing you know, you've got long term issues. Yeah, and unfortunately, everyone responds differently to care. So you'll you'll see certain people do well with. Those types of injections and other people, they'll say, you know, hey, I did three of them. It didn't do anything. Yeah. So the TMJ is what we're focusing on today. And remember, that is the small joint that goes between your mandible, which is the jaw, and the skull itself. And, you know, I always think it's interesting when you learn about the skull because, like Dr. Browning was saying, it moves. You know, we just think of the skull itself, but there is small, tiny movements, and there's 22 bones that make up the jaw, and there's a lot of little structures and sutures and stuff in there that have to kind of expand with our with our breath with our uh you know the way that our anatomy works we're always kind of in motion and movement and sometimes that's getting things to move and relax at the same time can be tricky yeah and and inherently the tmj has a a very important role with the movement of those cranial bones It, it as as the tmj moves it helps to assist a pumping type mechanism uh in the cranium that that provides the fluid that 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 lubricates the the brain and and the nerves um we, cerebral spinal fluid is what it's called so it's it's very very important that the TMJ uh has good function or else it can it can impair that absolutely and when we look at you know all the moving pieces that are part of this you have to take into consideration you have the upper jaw the lower jaw the skull You've got the, the, like I said, the discs that are in there, in there and also the tendons that are kind of bringing everything together. And what I think is interesting, I was watching something on the way in here, was uh, I think it was on one of the TV programs that they had, they talk about medical issues and stuff. You know, the latest and greatest thing to do was inject, you know, some of these muscles with Botox to just keep everything in place. And, you know, that's that's might be interesting. But, again, that's only looking at is it a muscle issue and, and not looking at the whole overall area. Yeah, and, and Botox is becoming quite the popular therapy now because it, it what it does is it is it basically paralyzes the muscle. So you're you're at the mercy of the, the practitioners who is injecting you. There's lots of obviously small muscles in, in the jaw and in in the skull. So um you don't want to miss the mark on that one because it's, you know, three or four month process where that muscle might not be working. Right. And even people that are doing it, like I said, about three months later, they're having to go back in. So really, you're looking at, you know, the Band-Aid effect of just kind of not dealing with what's going on overall, where there might be an issue that that could be very fixable, you know, and maybe you need the help of a specialist to really go in there and explain to you and really look at, see what's going on with your particular jaw and stuff, whether it's affecting sleep, whether it's affecting migraines, whether it's affecting neck and head tension. October 17th. It's October coming up soon, and you know what that means here for the Dr. Tom Rizal Live Show. That means you're going to hear a lot about Ageless Health 2050 and the mind-body connection, the brain-body connection. And um, it's one day that I think even myself and I think Dr. Browning can agree with me on this. 
it's an interesting day for all who attend, the doctors and the um, attendees, because we all learn a lot. It's a lot of education. It's a lot of figuring out how one part of the body works with another part. In this particular year, we're focusing on how that brain connects with the rest of the body. How does it connect with the ner- nervous system? How does it connect with the immune system? How does it connect with the digestive system? And much more. There's actually going to be exercise demonstrations. Um, I know, um, I think Aaron Poe, who usually does the opening segment, is actually going to be speaking on exercise this year. Um, so there's going to be a lot of great information that you can get. So we're hoping that you can come and attend with us. If you go to Roselle Care, that's www.roselecare, Roselle Care. Dot com. There's a link there that will bring you to the speakers and also show you what the registration costs are. Um, there's still VIP seating available right in front. You can you can speak with us one on one, and then there's general seating available too for discounted prices. And that also includes an organic health care uh, health lunch. So you know when Sue talks about nutrition and she's on here and we're talking about what to eat, and not we've made sure that we've covered that aspect too. So TMJ. And other things that also create more inflammation in the body is what our topic is tonight or today. And what other things do you see, you know, we mentioned sports earlier and we see different areas of inflammation as well, too. Are there other areas that we see chronic issues that keep coming up over and over again that people kind of come in and, and they they try, you know, injections, they try um, medications for relaxation that they don't think that the rest of the body is going to help with. Are there other areas either in the skull or the joint that, that really have issues like this? Well, I, I'm going to throw something out there that I think is important that um, a lot of folks in natural health care know about, but I, I just think that the, the general population, certainly the medical guys don't talk about, is a lot of times people who brux, who grind at night, have GI issues, parasitic and bacterial problems and imbalance in the gut, which will cause grinding. So for people that have irretractable jaw issue, issues or problems that nobody can find the problem with, sometimes it's in the gut. So we, we expand that paradigm of diagnostics outside of even the neuromuscular skeletal side into GI function. So uh, there's a lot of things that the, the TMJ is associated with. Yeah, we, we got to think of that. It's really just the start of the digestive you know, the digestive system to begin with, you know, basically the food has to go in the mouth to get to the rest of it. So, you know, if that's not functioning well, it's going to function the rest of it. And then we have a lot of small, very intricate muscles that are, you know, we always think of the master muscle, the one that closes the, the jaw and stuff, but there are smaller muscles even behind that, deeper to that. And I know that you guys go in and, and have to work and manipulate those too, whether or not you have jaw tightness or like I said, SI joint issues as well. Yeah. And in many cases, the issue is just an imbalance of that musculature. As you said, the master uh, in the temporalis, these are the two big muscles that close the jaw. And in opposition, there's a muscle called the pterygoid that's internal. Uh, there's two pterygoids, but they're, they're inside. They open the jaw, and very often what happens is there's just a dominance on the closing mechanism, and the opening mechanism is is not working properly. A, a simple test that you can do to see if you, if you have good opening ability in the mouth is if you can put three fingers into your into your mouth. And if you can't, then there's an imbalance there, and that that means that uh, the the joint itself is under too much strain, and certainly the muscles as well. So there are actually things that we can be doing kind of at home, even just to assess ourselves and evaluate ourselves as well. Certainly, and there's certain things that people can do with at at home to to help with the problem. A lot of t- times, I'll give my patients uh, the the directions that at nighttime take a a washcloth, put put it under hot water, and then just put it. A, Apply it to the side of your jaw to relax that master, you know, and it works. Mm-hmm. Just basic hydrotherapy that can be done, you know, at home and stuff as well too. And then you mentioned also with the sports, like you know, the more and more we realize how much effect, you know, compact sports or compact <laughs> collision sports and um, different sports have, the more we're noticing that safety gear is put out to help protect those injuries as well yeah. or those areas. We're going to take a quick break, and we're going to finish up with a couple more phone calls. And you are listening to the Dr. Tom Rosell Live Show. We'll be right back. This is Dr. Tom Rosell, author of Ageless Health. Health is a do-it-yourself program. 
My book, now also available in audio version, is a step-by-step -step program of how to take control of your health and wellness without drugs or needless surgery. You have the capacity to change your health and level of well-being. Take control of your health today and order Health is a Do-It-Yourself program. For more information and to order, please visit agelesshealthbook.com. That's agelesshealthbook.com. 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. And welcome back to Dr. Tom Was Alive. That in studio today is myself, Dr. Stephanie Pina, filling in for Dr. Tom, and Dr. Harlan Browning, who is going to be your presenter this Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. at the Roselle Center for Healing in Fairfax, Virginia. If you want to hear him talk about what we've been talking about today, which is the TMJ joint and the dysfunctions that go along with it, you need to reserve your spot because this one's going to fill up quickly. Call the office at 703-698-7117 to reserve your spot for Wednesday night at 730. And also when you're there, you can also talk to us about Ageless Health 2015 and how you can be live in front. You can be right in the front row if you wanted to and enjoy all the lectures that are going to happen throughout the day by myself, Dr. Zell, by Dr. Browning, and all the other staff that you hear on the Dr. Tom Rosal live show. We're going to take a quick call. Sheila, thanks for holding on. Cheryl, are you still there? Hello. Hello. How's everything going? Do you have a question for us? Oh, yes, yes, thank you. Uh, yes, I noticed some blood in the stool last night, and I do have an appointment with the gynecologist, a uh, gastroenterologist, uh, the end of next week. But I was wondering whether that definitely indicates cancer, and I am 86 years old. And I'm leery about going through a colonoscopy. Got it. Okay. Well, I think setting up an appointment is a good thing because then you can see if what's going on. They'll be, they'll probably run a couple of extra tests without having to jump right to a colonoscopy to see if that stool or the blood that's in that stool is towards the end of the track or higher up. And usually if there's more issues with cancer, you're going to see stuff that's higher up. Um, you know, they also ask you how long this has been going on for too as well too because they want to make sure that that blood's not coming from somewhere else. You could uh -huh. be bleeding other areas in the body and then it's coming out through the stool as well. Um, mm -hmm. uh, other things that they could look at, you know, it could be blood that's related to hemorrhoid issues, which usually is more of a brighter red, or it could be related to inflammation of the digestive tract where there's basically like wear and tear that you, you hear about like with Crohn's and also colitis. So they, they'll they probably ask you some questions and see if they can I identify. have colitis. Oh, okay. So your uh -huh. colitis could be aggravated by, it could be, you know, just inflammation in the body. It could be looking at, we have to look at diet and stuff to see if we can calm it down. Um, because that will cause like wear and tear and that's inflammation. So what happens is some of that blood will actually come out. So there may be an aggravation there. And if, if we're not going back to treat the colitis, then that could be something that continues. And they may actually say, let's do a colonoscopy just to go see what, what's going on and what the extent of it is too. Yeah. But I thought at a certain age it could cause a rupture. It's more dangerous. Well, you can always, you can have ruptures at any age. I mean, you can see digestive issues like colitis and even young adults where there's inflammation as well too. And that's, that's why sometimes they go in and take a look to see, you know, what's going on. But when you're mm -hmm. typically having, you know, blood in the stool, you know, anytime you want to make sure that you're mentioned talking to a healthcare provider. So thanks for calling in for the question and hopefully everything's well. And if we can do anything to help with you as well, because we treat colitis in the office, you know, dietary, we look at inflammation that's going on in the body and different inflammation factors as well. Um, cause that could be related to different sensitivities. Um, just give us a call at the office, which is the same number we've been giving you 703-698-7117. Dr. Browning, Fill in the blank. The reason why people should come to your lecture on TMJ is because... Well, certainly if you're having a TMJ problem, we're going to go over a lot of the intricacies of the, the way the TMJ works. Um, I find a lot of people come to our lectures just because they're, they're, they they want to learn more. So there's going to be a lot of good information out there. And, you know, you might want to attend because you, you, you have a family member or a friend that's that's having issues with that. And then you might pick something up that you can pass along to them as well. Yeah, I think a lot of times, you know, we see one person come in and then they sit down with a with a group of people and next thing you know, they're all discussing, you know, I have this issue and that issue and, and they've come to multiple issues. We, pe we see people come to multiple ones and each 
doctor that presents something a little bit different helps us kind of understand how the body connects and works together, how it's a system, a true system, a holistic system versus a bunch of bits and pieces. That's going to be on Wednesday night, 7.30 p.m. at the Roselle Center for Healing. That's on 855-8550 Arlington Boulevard um, at the Red Cross Center. And um, I have a feeling it's going to be a packed night, so make sure you call in and reserve your spot. As always, Dr. Roselle will probably be back next week, and he'll be able to fill you in on all the fun things he's probably learned, I believe, in Florida this week. Um, and work to see if we can find and, and deal with some more issues about trying and applying and seeing what works for you and getting you more involved with your health care. i got to thank Dr. Browning for being our the, the fill-in pitcher again with me. Uh, we keep, like I said, we keep doing this over and over again. It seems to be our, our, our weeks all the time. Yeah, we always have a lot of fun though, so. Yeah. It's and, good. And I think it's nice because when you sit down and have specialists from two, two different areas where he's, he's got a nutrition background, he's got the neurology background, he's got the chiropractic background, and I'm coming in with the naturopathic background and the acupuncture background, you see how these, these systems work together in the healing process as well. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a lot of information sharing. Yeah. And that's what we do. That's what this show is about. That's what the lectures are about. And that's what Ageless Health is about. So we invite you to come visit us and, and listen to the lectures, listen to the radio show, join us on the, the website. And if you have a question, you can always email us as well, too, and we'll get back with you. This is us live from the Dr. Tom Rizal Live Show here in studio. And we look forward to hearing from you. And hopefully you'll be listening to us again next week. Thanks. Are you dental phobic? Do you neglect your dental health because of fear and anxiety? A beautiful smile begins with exceptional dental care, and you can trust in the expertise of Soft Touch Dental Care and Dr. Michael Chung. Soft Touch Dental Care is unlike any dentist office you'll ever experience. Their warm and welcoming environment is designed to soothe fears and anxiety the moment you arrive, and they're especially pleased to pamper their honored guest patients. Dr. Michael Chung is a professional and leading expert in all areas of comprehensive dentistry, including cosmetic, sedation, neuromuscular, TMJ, and implant dentistry. Offering state-of-the-art technology, Dr. Chung can give you the smile of your dreams. Arrange for a complimentary consultation today with Dr. Michael Chung and experience the expertise that makes Dr. Michael Chung so unique. Call 703-319-6990. That's 703-319-6990. Or visit bestinsmile.com. That's Mm bestinsmile.com. Thank you.